In this video, we'll review the various strategies for factoring polynomials. We'll start with factoring out a greatest common factor. In this binomial, both terms have a common factor of 5x. So I'll use the box strategy, which is like an area model, to divide the original polynomial by the greatest common factor. And then I'll think 5x times what is 25x cubed, and 5x times what is negative 15xy. And I'll rewrite my original binomial in factored form. So that was factoring out a greatest common factor. Now here we're asked to factor the trinomial. Reverse FOIL would be a good strategy because we have a trinomial of the form ax squared plus bx plus c where the leading coefficient is 1. So we want to start with our two sets of open parentheses. And f in FOIL stands for the first two. So what times what equals x squared? And then I usually go to the last two, what times what equals 35, but which also adds together to equal 12. And then I want two plus signs because in my trinomial I had all pluses. And then I'll check using FOIL or double distributive that this product makes sense. So x times x is x squared. The outside and the inside two terms are going to combine together to give me 12x, the middle term of my trinomial, and the last two terms will equal 35, so I know that I have factored this correctly in either order when you list the binomial factors. So we're also asked to factor a trinomial where the leading coefficient is not 1, and this requires a little bit more work. I think that using the box or the area model is helpful. So we put the 3x squared in the top left and the constant term in the bottom right. We multiply those two terms together and get 12x squared. And Now we start listing the factors of 12x squared. And then we look back at our middle term, our linear term of our trinomial. And we want two factors of 12x squared, which also add together to equal negative 8x. The only way that can happen is if both factors are negative. Now look over your set, and you'll notice the middle set adds together to equal negative 8x. So we put those along the diagonal. And now we use our structure of our box to figure out what times what would have equaled 3x squared. Notice we can factor out of the top row a 3x, and then above that has to be x. And 3x times something equals negative 6x, and negative 2 times something equals uh, positive 4. Also checking that x times negative 2 equals negative 2x. So now the box is making sense, therefore the factors of the trinomial are found on the outside of the box. 3x minus 2 times x minus 2. So here we have a trinomial where there's actually a greatest common factor first. Each term has a factor of 2 and a y. So let's factor out from this original trinomial, let's factor out the greatest common factor of 2y. And again, we'll use the box to figure out 2y times what was the original trinomial. So now we're going to rewrite our original trinomial in this factored form, but it's the trinomial in the parentheses that we're now going to reverse FOIL to factor. And we'll use two sets of open parentheses. x times x is x squared. 7 times 1 is 8. And I have to use two negatives in order to get the negative 8x as the linear term. 
So my final answer is 2y times x minus 7 times x minus 1. So now we also had some special products. Two of them that we looked at were difference of perfect squares and perfect square trinomials. Well, this one is not a trinomial. It has two terms. Both of the terms are perfect squares. So we will use the structure of a squared minus b squared factors into a minus b times a plus b to factor this polynomial. We'll factor it into the product of two binomials, 6x minus 7y times 6x plus 7y. And then finally, we learn factoring by grouping. And you'll notice in the original problem, there are four terms. There are not three terms. So we don't want to automatically try to use reverse FOIL or reverse box. We want to think, is there a common factor I can factor out of all four terms? And I don't see one. So then we will try to group the terms, and we can use any convenient grouping. I think the grouping that we see works for the first two. And if I factor a negative out of the second two, then I will factor out a greatest common factor from each group. We'll factor out a 3x squared from the first group and an 8 from the second group. Now we're going to look for a common binomial factor, which is evident there. It's the 2x minus 5. So we're going to factor that out. And our final factored form of the original polynomial is 2x minus 5 times 3x squared minus 8. So assorted practice problems, I could give you any problem here and ask you to factor it and you'd have to think about all of your different strategies and which one would make the most sense. So here is a polynomial I'm asking you to factor. So why don't you put this on pause and then come back and check if you are on the right track. So when you look over this you'll notice it is not a trinomial. It is not a binomial. It has four terms. We th we're thinking that factoring by grouping would be the best way to do this. We would look for a greatest common factor first. And if that's not possible, we'd group the terms, we'd factor out the GCF and rewrite it. So this is what I came up with and hopefully you came up with something similar. So no matter how you grouped the terms initially, our final factored form should match. So we reviewed quite a lot of strategies in this video. Which of these strategies do you feel comfortable with and which one do you feel like you need to go back to your notes and get a little bit more practice with?